welcome back to too many hobbies uh today we're sitting down here in uh my battle cave here the bunker and uh we're somewhere in normandy i can see i'm like literally in it uh whole purpose of this video is is that uh i've been into miniature war gaming for uh a few years now and uh, i played a lot of great games and a lot of great game systems but every time i play uh, say like Flames of War or something, when I play it, I always have fun, great game systems, I'm not trying to knock them or anything, but when I play, in the end, I say that's fun, but you know what, there, there could have been so much more, um, and maybe because some of this is, I'm actually, um, you know, not looking for any thanks or anything like that, but uh, I hate throwing it out there, but I'm actually a, a combat veteran myself, uh, I've been there uh, on the ground, and uh, up front with the troops and uh maybe that's where i get that feeling from like you know because i've been there and actually seen how this stuff goes uh i feel like with the miniatures these are such this is such an awesome thing that it could be so much more and actually really give you you know even a more of a feeling of being a commander and trying to get platoons to move or squads or or an individual guy, or just keeping the cohesion of, of of a platoon from you know crumbling, falling back. You know, the natures of all the things on the battlefield. You know, every man in a platoon ain't a hero, guys. It's just not really how it works. Uh, they're not going to sit there with bullets always flying over the head. Eventually, someone's going to go. You know, we got to get the hell out of here. Let's fall back. I mean, that's really how it works. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that everyone's a coward either, but you know. The natural instinct when you're sitting there with the rounds flying over your head you're, you're only going to stay there for so long guys you know and that's just the reality of it this isn't hollywood and that's not how it really works and you know and not the sniper is always in the bell tower sort of thing you know what i'm saying um so anyway i think the whole purpose of this and my point of this whole rambling on before i get to it i'm actually having an idea um with some of the things that i faced in miniature war gaming that i think could be better um, one is the game system itself representing actually more of actually being more realistic and actually being in command of troops is, is one Two, getting the armies on the table while spending all these time and money and buying all these books and building armies and everything else. I, you know, I hate to tell you newsflash never once in combat when I went into contact somewhere that I sat there and said, you know, um, you know, you get intelligence or you have forward scouts and, you know, we always know how intelligence always works. It's not always correct. And uh, it's not like you go up there and say, hey, you know, my platoon's over here. We got 30 men. How many men do you have? You know, let's see what happens. It, you know, over the years throughout history, you know, uh, three to one odds, two to one odds. I mean, it just happens. So uh, I've developed a system where you're not always sitting there spending um, time in building an army and buying all these books and, and my whole idea of this game system that I, I've been actually working on for a couple years and I've actually I think I've come up with something that's actually going to work well and it's not like something I throw together in a month well over a year I've been working on just the basic concepts of this is not only that when we do this if you want to have those lists you will have them but you won't have to buy all these books I'm thinking about actually depending on how much response I get back from people I'm going to do, uh, I'm thinking about doing a Patreon where it's an open source and I actually get feedback from all you, what you like and what don't you like without changing the system too much and robbing from it. But the charts and stuff like that, campaigns, I'm, I'm thinking about doing link campaigns. It's, it's solo. Uh, it plays really well solo actually without a crazy AI or all these crazy rules that, you know, I feel like I'm back in school digging through a book looking for all these answers. Uh, that's the other part. I want to keep it really simple, streamlined, give you the most realistic um, feeling of actually being in a battle. And in the end, going, wow, man, that was, you know, that's probably what a commander felt like trying to get these men to move and, and morale and, and people trying to stay into the fight and it give you as much immersion into what it was actually like on a tabletop without drawing blood. Uh, anyway, um, that's a little bit of where I'm at and where I'm going with this. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking, I, so if you're thinking about this or you're interested in it, or if I sparked anything, uh, I probably lost half of you because 30 seconds, you people, most of you guys are gone. But if you're still here and you're interested in this, 
uh, I'm going to go through and kind of just show you how uh, like a turn kind of goes in with just um, um, having the initiative and how it goes back and forth. And you don't have uh, when you're playing solo or you're playing against someone else, how you don't have a player to stand there by one side moves all their army. And then once in a while, I, I put this guy in ambush and I get to react. I'm going to show you this system that I come up with where it swings back and forth constantly, just like in real battle. In a flash, guys, the initiative in any kind of engagement swings just like that. It's so fast, and it's so back and forth all the time. Um, it's total chaos. It's chaotic with somewhat controlled organization um, is my easiest way to explain it. So I kind of want to show you and probably go into that now. But I wanted to get the big stuff out of the way, kind of like how the initiation and moving and all that, actually how a turn would go. And then if you guys would, down below, comment, let me know. Say, hey, I'm really interested. Yeah, let's start a Patreon. I'm interested. I'll support you. Like I said, I'm not trying to get rich off this. All that money is going to go for actually um, getting this done and setting things up and having an open source, guys. So when you're a part of this rule set, it's a community, guys, not... Uh, you know, you're separated and you you know what I'm saying? It's it, it's more community based. Now you, you buy a book, you're at home and that's it. We can have that open source and that great use the uh, technology of today to build on a great rule set, guys. And you can, you know, and it's, the one major part I also want to say is when you do that and we add things and change things, this is your game, guys. You can play it the way you want. You keep what you like, take away what you don't like, add other things, you know, like I shooting tables that maybe you like and maybe you like a different shooting table up to you all simple though and not making everything crazy all right i rambled on enough so let me uh let me get to the table here get the camera in my hand and i'll show you a little bit what i'm talking about guys be right back all right guys i'm back got the camera in the hand so it's a little uh, jittery and i'm jarring you all over the place uh got a lot on my mind trying to get this all out and uh a little excited about this whole thing to be uh, quite honest but uh here we are i got my table here uh the first thing i want to say about uh paths to hell that's what i'm thinking about naming this game like i said i'm excited forgot to mention it earlier and when i was rambling but uh in paths to hell uh one of the major things is that i don't want someone i don't want to be telling someone how to play their game and how they want to do it and what's best for them uh, an example, like right now, um, this game can be played in 15 mil, 28 mil combination. My terrain's 28, my figures are 15. And the unit sizes and how you organize your army, I have ideas, but then you get to choose what you want to do and what figures you have and what's easiest for you to set up and what size game in the end that you want to run. I mean, I have this idea of how you can set it up. If you want to use 28 millimeters, you can use individual guys, guys, to represent things where you don't have to have hundreds of models. Again, I love painting. I love getting all that stuff done and painting my miniatures and building stuff. But you know what? I also like playing the game. So until then, until you have those hundreds of models built, if you want to get a game in and you want to play, and it's just as enjoyable as when you got all the models on the table, that's my idea. Uh, but what I have here is I actually have a battalion of, uh, is that correct? I, I might be off there, but I, I believe it's a battalion. I got um, two companies worth of uh, infantry and tanks and support guns and stuff like that um, for a battalion size game is what I have going on here. Uh, a little rundown of the scenario real quick before I, I go any further. You know, like I said, this is just a town somewhere in Normandy, France. Late 44, Americans are moving through uh, Europe, or through France, and they pushed up to this town, um, and uh, they're just trying to push their way through. At first, I already did round one, uh, kind of move things along uh, before I show you how things actually go here. Um, you know, just like normal, you know, the moving stages aren't always so interesting, so I wanted to get things a little bit closer, but this is how the turns will go. Um and uh like i said somewhere in france and uh americans are trying to push through and holy crap they run into a whole bunch of uh whole bunch of uh germans guys uh so anyway like i was saying uh right now like this base here would be a representation of a platoon 
Uh, I keep these dice behind here. They have a power or full power or full platoon is, is six. As you can see there, they've been hit. They got a pin marker there and, and a, the pin and the morale all work in cohesion with each other. All the same thing with the terms intermixed, but they all do the same thing. Uh, you see a bailed marker there from Flames of War that I've 3D printed out. They've actually used that. You know, can reuse it. That's the great part. You can use stuff that you have, guys, and it's not going to sit on the shelf and waste. But um, the idea is, is that that platoon's full strength with V6. They've been hit a couple times. Like I said, not every company or every platoon or every squad is full of a bunch of uh, gun ho heroes, guys. And the reality of it, when things are really going bad and, and you're you're in the nasty, you're not always staying there. But these guys were up and in the building here. They failed one of their uh, morale checks because they're over half strength, which I'll explain all this later. They actually fell back. If they were under half strength and they failed, they would run off the table, guys, and, and the unit would, that platoon would be destroyed. Uh, why? It's very important for management of your pin and your morale. Very important in this game to actually use command. To actually rally these guys, get guys going. It's kind of to simulate, you know, come on guys, let's, you know, those pep talks and that pushing, that commander showing his influence on the battlefield to get these guys moving again, guys. Uh, you know, and not just one person, I'm not saying, you know, the field commander or anything. I'm talking, you know, the lieutenant in the platoon or the NCO or the sergeant, the squad leaders. It, it's all to represent all that, what's going on. I mean, right now this unit's representing that it's, it's having a critical breakdown. Not good. So anyway, normally, like I was saying, in Paths to Hell, I don't have this game as when you play solo and you play with a partner, the nice part, so you don't have tons of rules and all this different stuff you got to follow, it's both played the same. So if I play another person, I just have a person here, and if I don't have a person, when I play solo, the rules are still the same and they still work both ways, guys. This is a great part that I kind of figured out here. Sorry about that stand in the way there. So that's one of the, the nice things about this system that I've developed. Now, the commander of the unit, every unit has a, has to have a commander. Overall, you know, the big honcho on the field. You know, the company CO, battalion commander, that's what he is. Then you have your platoons and you're broken down. So like this tank right here, just for an example, that this is a platoon of tanks, so it's three tanks, guys. And I've done it that way. You could play it the other way if you want, but for a lot of people who don't have a bunch of models but want to have a big game, this is simulating that big game, guys. Uh, where was that? So that, that's kind of like the breakdown of the units there. Now, how this would start normally, a turn doesn't end. A turn only ends when all the units have failed the morale or they've moved or they can't move anymore. I'm going to show you about what I mean. So a normal turn would start with rolling two dice. I'm playing solo. So the Americans are red, Germans are green. So the Americans have just won five to four, have just won the initiative for turn two to start. And how you would do this, oh, I meant to tell you this before, the, the field commanders have a morale rating of nine. Your normal platoons or your tanks or your infantry units or your your artillery guns, whatever you may have out in the field, their morale rating is eight. Now, how the field commander works, if I want, you would pick a unit. Just say, I'm going to pick, that platoon's all messed up, but I'm, uh, I'm all, let me come over to the Americans. I'm going to pick this Sherman sitting over here, Firefly, sitting over here on the edge of the board, right there. I want to activate that unit. He's full strength. That's what the dice means back there. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab two dice. Now his morale is eight, I'm gonna roll. I rolled exactly an eight. So now in that case, I get to do what I want, one action with this unit. Let's say, I, I will have all this written down, but just say, and this is what I'm talking about on Patreon, everyone will have access to these free files for all these rules. Uh, just say, I wanted to move this guy. He moved his distance. That guy's done, he moved. That's what he did. Now, that guy is not done. He moved once. His morale's eight. Now he gets to roll again. 
he rolled a six. As long as he keeps rolling under his morale, say, so when he started, he started at an eight, he did an action. Now that morale becomes down to seven. Now he needs to roll less than seven. And you can keep going on all the way down to two to where you can't move anymore if you're that lucky and roll. Now this is going to represent the chaos, the confusion. It's going to represent everything on the battle. Just because an order is given on the battlefield or someone's told to go do something, there's sometimes the unit hesitates. They got that bad feeling. No one's moving. They do go. They don't go. Small, I mean, there's all kinds of things that may affect these things on a battlefield. And this is what's nice, especially when you play solo. When you're playing the other side, just because I want to do something doesn't mean it always happens. So now just say I move that, I pass the morale check again. This unit's good to go, right? So also you're going to keep track of your actions. So say now, oh, all right, I, I move this guy. I want to move him again into like just say... This track wasn't here for right now because that, that wouldn't make sense what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to explain all this. He moved there. There's no target there. He moved. I'm done. But now, because he did that, I, I still have the initiative. But he's he's took two actions, and what I you would do is take another die. The red die, I mean, he's taken two actions. But even now, even it's still my turn. He's still not done. If I want to come back later to move him to do something, I can. Now, just say, all right, I moved him. I want to go move my infantry unit there on the corner. I want to move them out so that Stu shoots them all right in the face. God, why you would do that, I don't know, but I'm just trying to show a thing. So they're sitting there. Their morale is eight. I roll again. I got a six. I'd move that unit. They move out. They want to move again and get up across the street. They rolled a seven. They get to do it again. They move. They, so that's simulating them running across the street and that Stu did never, never saw them. Now, when that happened, the other player, now when, like, when you're playing or you're playing solo, now in the reality of life, when they ran out across the street like that, that Stu has an option He's going to say, I want to steal the initiative at any time. That's something that makes sense that someone would do. I mean, he's, they're running out and straight in front of a tank. Most likely the tank would see them, guys. But, of course, there's always the fog of war, right? So that tank, they, say they moved out to the middle of the street, that platoon. Now the Stug is going to roll their morale. They pass with double ones without a problem. It's not done yet. That Stug says... All right, now they passed. They got the initiative to take the initiative to do something about this, but do they see them in the chaos of the battlefield? They roll a six. You need a three or higher to see them. They do see them. Now that Stug is, a, is not just one Stug. It's three Stugs, and they're going to open up with their, of course, their machine guns, right? So that would be nine dice for the Stug to shoot. All hits are on three when it comes to machine guns, pistols, uh, rifles, like I said, guys, so you don't have all these charts to go back and forth. Oh, I got two guns, two guns here. I got, I got six rifles, but I got SMGs and I got machine gun to cut all that out. Right. So the machine guns got three shots per tank, right? So you roll hits on threes or actually, I'm sorry, let me back up. It's long range fours in the opens back to three, right? Really bad mistake for this platoon. So, they got three hits. Not over yet. Now, there are veteran platoon. All kills are on four, fives, or six, depending on the ratings. Similar to bolt action. If you're uh, a green, you're going to be hit on four. If you're uh, a, a veteran or hardened, you know, fives, sixes, right? So, these are just regular, um, you know, troops. So, they're hit on four, but no hits but the thing is they ran out they the initial hit gives them a pin now he didn't kill anybody but right there because he just this platoon was actually moving across the street he just stopped them dead in their tracks and that stug actually just stole the morale for that unit or for the german side so now I'm on to the German side. 
Now he's fired once and he stole that initiative. But he's like, hey, I got these guys pinned in all of a sudden. These guys are running. And these guys are pinned right in the middle of the street. I actually had him on ambush, but that's a whole nother thing. We're just pretend that little skull marker ain't there. Um, so now he just stole the initiative. Now he, you know, you can go again with him, or you could pick another unit and go. Say for whatever reason you didn't want to use a stug, but you wanted to move up the panzer instead, right? So you would start over again, you'd roll your initiative. I just rolled a double six, guys, which I kind of wanted that to show. But that unit just stole the initiative, did a morale check to make sure that the unit was going to follow orders, but failed. That unit gets a big red poker chip. That unit's done. And the Germans have now have lost the initiative because one of their teams have just failed the morale or initiative checked to do something. So now just like that in real combat, it's switched back to the American side. Now the Americans are like, oh, got the initiative back. I got a nice little uh, Sherman Firefly sitting there and there's a nice little German Panzer sitting there. Do they have the initiative to do something? Are you going to check initiative? They do. They have a six. Now you're going to go on to the shooting chart. There's another uh, system that I set up for light, medium, and heavy tanks to get rid of all the chaos of this tank's got this penetration, this armor, and all. I have a chart that I built for all this that makes everything very easy. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but just say that tank went, he shot, he passes the initiative. Say he went to go again, or just say he missed. He fired, he missed. That was one action, right? Well, now he wants to go again. So, oh, he goes six. He would be able to take another action. If he wanted, he could shoot at that tank. He could move out of the way, not press his luck. Or he could continue to press the fight, just like in real combat. Sometimes when guys go charging in, they come in hard and charging. And then all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, wait a minute. What the hell am I doing? Let me get some cover, then throw. I mean, there's all kinds of variables that happen. But say he went again, he fired to say, oh, man, this tank crew needs to go back to tanker school because it can't hit anything. He rolls. Of course, I'm not kidding. Just say they rolled a double six. They're done. They would get a token. They lost initiative. Now it goes back to the Germans. The Germans now have the initiative. They say on this platoon, they're going to move up and advance. And it would go on like that, back and forth, swinging initiative and moving and doing these actions that you could take, like, you, you could rally, you could go down with a unit, dig in, um, move, double move, all that stuff, move, shoot, uh, depending on how far, how many dice, because you roll dice to see actually how far you go. You just don't go as far as you want or a set thing. It, 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 all these things are going to be like variables in here. So not everything always goes your way, simulating really actually how combat goes, because nothing ever really goes your way. Um, you, you know, in a, in a sort of sense, just because you want to move six inches or you want to get to a wall doesn't mean you always make it to that wall that's 50 yards away. And I wanted to simulate that. So that's how that would go. And a turn would go like that all the way till every unit would have a red marker or they were on ambush and they didn't, they're waiting. If a unit puts a unit on ambush and they're waiting, they don't want it. They could pass, they could pass. The other side gets all done. And then the end of the turn would come at the end of that turn. You would have units that were hit or beat up. You would want to rally. If you, At the end, that gives you a chance to rally. You can also rally your troops during your turn if you roll for it. And then there's a whole system of rallying while you're going to keep those troops pushing hard through. You know, Even though they're getting beat up, bullets are flying. They got the morale, the initiative. They're still going. They're still pushing forward, pushing hard. Um, anyway... That's a little bit of it, and that's a little bit of my ideas. I just wanted to get this out there to see what my feedback is, that what I, what I get, what people think about this system, how it's going. Um, I'm going to throw this out there. Like I said, the more comments, the more stuff I get, the farther I'm going to push with this. I don't want to sit here and do all this, and no one wants to do anything. This is just an idea that I have. I want to throw it out there, see what people think. Let me know. Be greatly appreciated. Like I said below, thumbs up. Uh, please comment below. Let me know what you think about this system, how it would go back and forth. I'm going to do another video 
where I'm not so amped up and crazy and actually go through step by step and do a whole turn with shooting and everything else. Uh, that's going to be the very next video to actually show it a little bit more in, in depth. But I'm just trying to get it out there, just the general idea of how things would work in Paths to Hell. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping by. I hope you're interested. Like I said, don't forget, comment below, let me know. That'll help and get this moving forward even more. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Happy gaming, everybody.